Uh, good morning. Let us start uh, our today's lecture and we will continue talking about uh, differential kinematics. Okay. Let us just have uh, a really brief reminder of what we have seen last week now. Differential kinematics is the topic that study the relationship that uh, exists between the joint velocities and the end effector linear and angular velocity. In order to understand it, in order to uh, use it in a proper way to develop control laws that we will start doing, I don't think tomorrow, but uh, um, I don't say today, but tomorrow probably, yes. We need first to develop some mathematical concept. And we have seen uh, in this uh, way the geometric and the analytical Jacobian. So what is the geometric Jacobian? The ge geometric Jacobian is uh, this matrix here that relates the joint velocities to the linear and angular velocity. Actually, this is a configuration dependent matrix. It means that its value changes with the configuration. Next uh, practice lesson, we will uh, build this function. So we will uh, build uh, the Jacobian in a way much similar to what you have done yesterday, where you built, uh, computed the direct kinematics uh, of a generic robot. So the idea will be exactly the same. Then uh, we also and we built, we already did it. We have built the geometric Jacobian, uh, let me say, in a systematic and geometric way by computing the way the velocities propagate along the structure. But we also verified that, okay, is it also possible to say, I have my equation of direct kinematics and uh, I can simply differentiate this mathematically and achieve uh, what is so-called analytical Jacobian. Well, what is the difference between the geometric and the analytical? Basically, for the linear velocity, there is no difference. So the first three lines of the geometric and analytical Jacobians are the same, exactly the same, but then, the geometric Jacobian allows us, to, allows us to compute the angular velocity, while the analytical allows us to compute the time derivative of the orientation representation. And those two concepts are different. And we spend some time in understanding why those two concepts are different. What is important now is that we do have those two instruments and we can select based on the control objective we, we face, which one to use, okay? We also saw the definition and the implications of kinematic singularities. So the definition is quite simple. Uh, this is a, a configuration dependent matrix and it comes out that in certain configurations the matrix can lose its rank mathematically okay but then what is the robotic implication and we verified easily a loss of mobility we will verify soon the other implications, for example, the large joint space velocity close to a singularity. This will be clear when we will develop the algorithms to inverse kinematics, to differential inverse kinematics. Now, what are we going to do today? Uh, let me check. Okay. What are we going to do today? Well, we need to to refresh, I hope that this will be a recap or refresh of some mathematical concept before moving on, okay? So let me spend next hour in reminding us 
system of linear equations. Actually, for the students of uh, Magistrale Informatica, those pages uh, are exactly the same as the pages that we saw last year in Teoria dei Sistemi. Okay. In robotics, uh, the concept of solving a system of linear equations plays a certain role, and we will see very, very soon why. Then, uh, I would like to remind uh, the concept of a singular value decomposition of a matrix. Uh, this could be the first time that you see this uh, mathematical operation. It's not a problem. We just focus on the main point of this aspect. And then we will, uh, let me say, have fun in drawing some quadratic forms. It's nothing conceptual here, but uh, quadratic forms will appear in some parts of the of the course. So I would like you to visualize what a quadratic form is. Okay, so this is what we are going to do today. Uh, okay, I I heard some notifications. This is just because of the new arrived on uh, good morning. Uh, uh, I traffic or I live uh, as usual uh, the mobile in case the connection get lost send me an sms that i notice hit okay okay so let us start with some recap if i have uh, m uh, equations and uh, n unknowns that are uh, related by um, uh, algebraic linear equations, something like that. I can write it down uh, in that way. So a, a, a real scalar multiplied by the unknown plus etc. So a linear combination of the unknowns equal a known term. And this is for each of the M equations. This can be written in a matrix vector form. Those letters now are, I mean, totally abstract. There's not any robotics meaning in those letters. And then uh, I can recognize three cases depending on the dimension of M and N. So the number of equations or constraints and the number of unknowns. The first case is the easiest one. If uh, the numbers are equal, so n equal m, actually is, I can say that the problem is square, and the system admits one solution given the hypothesis, the assumption that A is full rank, okay? In this case, I simply left multiply by the inverse of A and obtain the unknown X. Okay. Now, uh, whenever possible, I always try to have um, a visual interpretation of my concept or graphical representation because I think it helps. So now let us see uh, an example and uh, we can uh, have, have two, uh, basically we can make examples on uh, two equations, two unknowns, or three equations in three unknowns, uh, if you want to represent it graphically. And uh, later, and then more than that, we can, also we can only imagine it. So two equations in two unknowns. Uh, two, equa two equations totally randomly, and uh, each of the two equations represent uh, a line in the R2 space. Um, I assume that you know, the, the, you know this concept. So the line where x1 is the x-axis and x2 is the y-axis, okay? Now, each of those two is a line. Now, this is the line, this line, and the second equation is this line. Now, each point of the line satisfies the corresponding 
equation. It means that each point here of the blue line satisfy the first equation. What is the only point in R2 that satisfies both the equation? Basically, the intersection between the two lines. Okay? The assumption that the lines are not parallel is the same as asking A to be full rank. Okay? So this is the inverse of A, and the solution is basically only this one. Okay. This is the easy situation, and I assume that you all add this in calculus. Then, what if I do have more constraints, more equations than unknowns? Uh, at high school, I mean, the, the, the teacher just say, okay, this cannot be solved. It does not admit a solution. Actually, this is a very frequent case situation when, when you do identification, okay? Because you do want more measurements in order to have, uh, to, to counteract the effect of uh, the sensor noise. So if we don't have a solution, what we could do is to try to uh, design an optimization problem where we do minimize something. So what is the more, I mean, intelligent variable to minimize? The error. I do know that uh, y minus ax cannot be zero because I do have more constraints than unknown. So I do not have a one single solution, but I can try to minimize the square norm of this one over, of course, the unknown x. If I, I mean, follow a calculus uh, textbook, I do know that uh, I can more or less easily find the solution. The solution is achieved by means of uh, the pseudo inverse of the matrix A, and this is called the left pseudo inverse of the matrix A. The pseudo inverse can be computed the symbol is a, a DAG, this kind of strange cross. The name is DAG, and can be computed by resorting to A in this way. And this is the graphical representation of what I just said. More equations that unknowns, three equations in two unknowns, each of the equation is a line. They do not intersect in one single point. I do ask my optimization argument to minimize the error, so a kind of distance uh, from the three lines of the solution. And then uh, this is the closest point. It's in italic because I can select various kinds of norms, okay? Uh, just pay attention here, the matrix A is 3 by 2 because it's given by the coefficient 15, 10, 3, 10, minus 30, 10. Its pseudo inverse is 2 by 3, okay? Because x has dimension 2. This is the pseudo inverse. This is the vector of known terms, so here. They're right outside of the equations, and this is the solution. Okay. I know that this vector here does not seem to be really no, in the center of, of uh, I should check why, but let me say that this is the mathematical solution. Okay. Then, if I have more unknown than equations, I'm in the situation where the system admits infinite solutions. And this is the most interesting situation in robotics. We will spend some time in trying to understand this situation, okay? If I have infinite solutions uh, and uh, I want to somehow put it in uh, automatic control, uh, the fact that uh, 
I want to solve this system of linear equations, I cannot uh, accept any ambiguity. I cannot have an infinite solution. I have to select one among the infinite solution. One possibility it is, is to say, okay, why don't you take the minimum norm solution? Why so? Because usually this is related to some energetic concept. So having the minimum norm is uh, more or less always a good idea. Okay? So I've, I, I'm looking for X that minimize this. And of course, the trivial solution is zero, but subject to the constraint, so the, the equations, is not zero, the solution. I find the solution by resorting to calculus uh, textbooks, and the solution still is a pseudo inverse. The name is, a, is still pseudo inverse. Now it's a right pseudo inverse, and this is uh, its uh, um, uh, notation. I mean, it's uh, the way you can compute. From the symbolic aspect, the symbol, the notation is the same because there is not ambiguity. Okay? Matrix A, in this case, has more line than column. We say high rectangular, but I think high rectangular is only Italian. In, in, in English, you don't, you, don't, you don't say high rectangular for a matrix with more line and columns. And there is no ambiguity because you cannot uh, implement this one for the other case, for the low rectangular matrix. Okay, so there is no ambiguity. However, I have infinite solution, so this is the minimum norm. What if I'm interested in all the others? I can write the generic solution in this way, and we will spend a few minutes on this. So now let, let us just see the, 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 the equation. Uh, I take an arbitrary vector in the domain of the unknown, and I multiply by this matrix uh, that is a null space projector. It means that uh, this operator here projects the arbitrary vector in the null space of A. It will not affect the solution on Y. And we will uh, see it a little bit later. Okay? What is the graphical representation basically it's just one line one equation in two unknowns all the points of the line are the solution only the red uh, point here is the minimum norm all the other point can be obtained with this formula okay in some cases i just do want to have the minimum norm solution in other case i do have good reason to move around and we will see why okay uh, sorry this is a simply a recap of the recap okay so this is a simply one page where you do have all the situations together. Just don't remember that. Okay. What about my, uh, my program? I do a compute the pseudo inverts. Well, in a mathematical language, as I just said, the symbol is the same, it is the same for the two pseudo inverse. The notation is the same, but there is not ambiguity. Okay? In uh, the computer program that we are going to use for, uh, for our exercise, uh, all the three situations can be computed with the same syntax, this one. Okay? Numerically, solves the three cases. It's a, and, and it's, it's a matter of the implementation of MATLAB to recognize which of the three cases he is, okay? Okay.
Okay. Now let us move on the singular value decomposition. This may be new for most of you. Can you can I ask uh, how many of you have already seen the singular value decomposition? Well, and from Google Meet, any of you that uh, already studied the uh, SVD? No. Okay. So we will uh, very briefly try to understand it because this is a concept that is quite useful to visualize numerical issues that can arise with matrices. Now, you may ask, uh, why do I care so much at matrices if I'm following a robotic class? Because the Jacobian is a matrix, okay? The Jacobian is the simplest way to control the end effector, it will uh, appear in all the control law, and it is a matrix that changes with the configuration of the robot. In uh, some situations, this matrix can be a little bit weird, and I have to understand why and when. Okay, this is the reason why I'm, I want to, to verify also this comp concept of uh, uh, related to matrices. If I take uh, a rectangular matrix, so generic dimensional matrix, the singular value decomposition is a decomposition of the matrix as the multiplications of three matrices. U sigma V transpose, where U is a square matrix with the dimension of uh, the codominium, and it is an orthonormal basis for the codominium. V has the dimension of the dominium, and is an orthonormal basis for it. So orthonormal, orthonormal means all norms unitary. So where are the norms of uh, M here, sigma is a, a square matrix that holds the singular values as diagonal elements. In decreasing order, this is conventional. All the computer, uh, all, all the, the um, uh, numerical software that you can use will follow this convention, but we must know that is a convention. Singular values are, let me say, kind of a square root of the eigenvalues. Okay, so they are related to the eigenvalues. Now, this is really a radiographia, uh, what is the English term for radiographia? I don't know. Qualcuno che un attacco ancora peggio. Vabbè, cercatemi un attimo come si dice. This is really a picture of uh, the inside of my matrix. Why? Let's try to understand it quickly. Now, this is sigma in the two cases. Sigma can be when I have more line, more row than columns, so sigma exhibits this structure. Sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma n. In the other case, sigma exhibit this structure. Okay? Let us try to have uh, a visualization of those matrices taken from, uh, taken from uh, uh, Wikipedia. Now, this is a generic M, matrix M. In this case, uh, it's just 4 by 3. Now, U is the orthonormal basis for the codominium, 4 by 4. And those four columns as a different uh, color because, I mean, uh, different gradient of, 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 gray, uh, of green, because those are the, the, a basis for RM. V is the same for the dominium. And here is V transpose, so that's the reason why they appear as rows. Okay? And sigma 
contains the singular value in decreasing order. So this is uh, a visual representation of the singular value decomposition. And those two uh, additional uh, graphical representation just tell me that uh, U and V are orthonormal. Okay, so this is a way to say, okay, those are orthonormal. It means that if I make U, U transpose, I have the identity matrix of dimension M. V, V transpose is the identity matrix is the identity matrix of dimension n. Okay? Another, vid uh, another visual representation. This is taken from the textbook of a colleague, a Swiss colleague, that uh, is teaching machine learning, and it uses a lot those mathematical concepts, and it made uh, a wonderful uh, series of, uh, of, um, of um, graphical interpretation of several mathematical concepts. Really, really uh, wonderful. And this is just one uh, snapshot that uh, I took in order to, to have uh, a, a clue of the singular value decomposition. Now, this is five by three, okay? Uh, but it's equal u sigma v transpose, it's only taken two singular um, values because, for example, the third is zero. And now you say, okay, look, this means that if I make this uh, matrix multiplication, I do multiply sigma one squared u one v one transpose plus the same with the second. Uh, element so it means that uh, with a singular value decomposition u and v contain information about uh, important directions in the dominion and condominium and sigma contains information about uh, the amplitude the norm of these projections the singular value decomposition is used a lot in image compression okay uh, i forgot to put the link there is a, a youtube channel of uh, a uh, professor from um, i think washington university that uh, has very very if you're interested uh, i will i will uh, uh, find the the channel because it, it makes use of SVD with a lot of uh, very nice explanations and also using MATLAB and Python uh, as numerical example. Uh, very, very interesting. Okay. So, what is the important concept about singular value decomposition? It is uh, an inside picture of my matrix. Now, here, let me skip this. Uh, just a tomb try to understand why in the last line I, I display those two ma two back matri uh, two multiplications and the result is the same so let's do it by yourself trying to to understand if you do understand it means that you uh, got the idea of svd okay now why svd is important because if I have uh, a certain matrix M, and I, this is the composition, and I need to make its pseudo inverse, now that the graphical representation is only for uh, the, this case, well, the pseudo inverse is very easily related to the SVD, because I have V, then I have the pseudo pseud inverse of sigma and a U transpose, where the pseudo inverse of sigma is this one. And this is very interesting because now I see that uh, I have uh, the division one divided by the singular values. Every time that I have a division, I should ask to myself, is this operation possible? Because I do know that division by zero is impossible, but it's very rare the case where I do have zero. The problem is uh, 
when I have uh, epsilon, so a very small number, and I have a division by a small number. This is a numerical issue. In this case, it means that I should pay attention to the minimum singular value. It means that if I have a check at the singular values, I have a matrix of the numerical conditioning of my matrix. Okay, this is a, an index of the numerical condition. Numerical balancing of what you want. Now, well, matrices are uh, more or less complex, but now I have a, a way to say, okay, a division by zero, I know that for scalar, for scalars uh, is uh, a forbidden operation, is nonsense in mathematical, is a numerically weak close to the zero. Now I can tell that uh, that's the same concept as a singular matrix or a close to be singular matrix. Okay? The issue is similar to division by zero. So if we keep this in mind, it's easier to understand why. I do not want to work close to a singularity with a robot. And I do remind that singularities can be found in the, world, in the, in the um, uh, limit of the world space, the boundaries of the world space, and those are always present, but also inside the world space in places that is difficult to map in advance. So let me say that they can arise uh, without notice, okay, the, the singularities. So that's the reason why I need to pay attention to the numerical balance of the Jacobian, and it means to the matrix properties. Okay. Now, let us just uh, have the third topic. That is a simple let me say, uh, graphical representation uh, of uh, the quadratic form. This is something that the students of uh, Magistral Informatica maybe may remember from Teoria dei Sistemi, and especially in the Kalman filter, because there is a, a, uh, this concept uh, shows up in the covariance matrix. So let us take uh, an n by n matrix now and define its quadratic form in this way. So this is a scalar of x transpose multiplied by a multiplied by x is a scalar. Okay. We can define uh, the matrix a positive definite. And the symbol is A larger than, this is not a zero, this is an uppercase O, okay? If uh, X transpose A, X is uh, uh, larger than zero for any non-trivial X. Now, why we do need to define uh, in a so complex way a positive definite, uh, the concept of positive definite matrix? Among matrices, there is not an order relation. We cannot say matrix A is larger than matrix B. This concept is nonsense in, uh, for matrices. Okay? So that's the reason why I, can, I need to define the concept of positive definite. And in some cases, I can say A minus B is positive definite. Okay, semi definite is larger or equal, or negative semi definite if I do the same with minus a. Okay, so this is the concept that I do need in order to, to check if a, if a matrix is somehow, let me say, positive. So this is the generalization to matrices of the concept of being positive or not for scalars. I do have uh, the possibility to check if a matrix is uh, positive definite or not. 
Well, I have a necessary condition if uh, the diagonal elements are all positive. This is only necessary. It means that if a diagonal element is negative, I can claim that the matrix is not positive definite. But if they are all positive, I cannot claim anything about is being positive definite or not. And then I have, uh, for example, two necessary sufficient conditions. If the eigenvalues of the matrix are all positive, then the matrix is positive definite. So it's very easy to check if a matrix is positive definite or not. Here there is another way. If a matrix is positive definite, then it is full rank and I can invert it. Okay. Okay, let us have a draw of a positive definite, uh, the quadratic form of a positive definite matrix. So this is uh, the quadratic form. Okay, F equal X transpose A X. This quadratic form is dominium, I mean, the matrix A is N by N with a generic N. And the value of the function is a scalar. The graphical representation is obviously possible only with n equal to. And this is what we are going to do. Okay? I take n equal to, I put x1 and x2 on the axis, on the play, horizontal plane. I take a, a positive definite matrix. I do know that this is positive definite, okay? Because I computed the, the eigenvalues, and those are the eigenvalues, so larger than zero. I do know that this is a positive definite. And I just compute this function for all x ranging from minus 2 to 2, here minus 2 to 2, and this is what I got. Now, let us have a look at this function. When x1, x2 is 0, the value is 0 because I multiplied by 0, then this is always positive and this is increasing. Actually, this is something that I've already seen. If uh, A is the identity matrix, what is x transpose x? Can you tell me mathematically what is it? Related to the related to the um, vector x. Let us assume that uh, x uh, is simply two dimension. Okay. X transpose x, x is x1, x2, multiplied by x1, x2, Now I have to make the multiplication. And this is x1 plus, plus x2 squared. So what kind of operation is this one? What am I computing here? What is it? X1 squared plus X2 squared, what is it? Grazie Pitagora, come siamo messi a Pitagora? Male. The square of this one, right? Or not? This is the square norm of X.
No? Okay. So when I do use uh, a matrix A, let's define the, a matrix A like this one. Very easy. What I do have is that uh, F is equal X transpose A X is two X one square plus X two square. This is still a strange kind of norm, weighting differently the various components. And this is what we have seen in the covariance, in the handling of the covariant matrix of uh, the Kalman filter. But still, this is a kind of norm. So this is my, our quadratic form. Okay? So in our, in our numerical example, this is what we are looking at. Now, if I cut my function at a certain level, isolevel curve are, are ellipses. The main axes are parallel to the eigenvectors. So I haven't computed the eigenvectors of A, but the main axes are parallel to, the, to those. And then the semi-axis of the ellipse are the square root of the inverse of the eigenvalues. What does it mean? The eigenvalues contains the information of how much my ellipse is scratched or rounded. Let us see, for example, the plot. If I cut my function where uh, f is equal to 1, the matrix is basically no matrix, so the identity matrix. Again, values are 1, 1. This is actually what I'm doing. I'm computing x1 squared plus x2 squared equal 1. That is a circle, OK? And those are the two eigenvectors of the matrix A, basically the axis. If I change only one eigenvalue, look, if I go forth and back, only the element Q2 of A is increasing, it means that the same axis on the corresponding auto vector um, eigenvector is decreasing. Okay, this is just uh, the draw of uh, the function. And now, when I um, assign different from zero elements out of the diagonal, I'm rotating the ellipse. This is just a graphical representation of my of my uh, quadratic form. Okay. Before moving on, I prefer to have a small uh, a small break. Okay, in order to to rest a little bit. And the first, I mean, the, the last hour was simply, not so simply for, for, for uh, this concept, because it's totally new. This shouldn't be new. And actually, I mean, quadratic forms, uh, it's something that is already in your uh, background. Uh, of course, everything is, uh, this is also new because I don't think that uh, you studied in calculus. Uh, it was already a topic that was not very common when I was a student. I think now you, you don't do it anymore. But this is just a, 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 a matter of a, a graphically represented function. So it's just you need just to, to think a little bit, but it's not conceptually difficult. This is new, but the main concept is, uh, well, I have a way to verify the numerical balance of my matrix. This could be more or less complex, but the implementation is not. We will, will not be difficult with the library of uh, 
commands, numerical, uh, numerical commands as, as uh, MATLAB, for example. Do we have any question? Okay, so let's start. Uh, I'll stop the, the, the registration and uh, we will meet uh, again at